thank you, first of all, to all of you for being here, for leaving everybody behind. You may have children, you may have partners, jobs, but perhaps a bath to relax tonight <laughs> after a long day. I'm very honored, first of all. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. And I believe each one of us on this world, not just in this room, has a story to share. It is each story that brings us back to that heart that we all seek to go back within ourselves. Each one of you in here have gone through times in your lives where you've had pain, where you've had times where people have doubted you, where you've doubted yourself. When somebody dumped you, where somebody you truly, truly loved disappeared out of your life. And each of those moments will do something to your body, whether you're aware of it or not. The body you have is like a membrane. It's like the computer chip that stores every single information from the moment you were born. And without knowing, when life adversity comes towards you, it responds automatically. It just goes an autopilot. A lot of people I meet in the personal industry, in business environment, with directors, with leaders around the world, I notice a common pattern. And that is our mind. That solutions to our problems are in our mind. When I run workshops, I have people who tell me it's something, you know, our mind is very powerful, and I do agree about that. But I ask them a question, and I'm going to share that with you guys tonight. Imagine, imagine the best car you could ever potentially imagine. It's right there in front of you. Lamborghini or Lamborghini, here we go. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Who's yeah. favorite car? Ferrari. Lamborghini. Ferrari, Lamborghini, anything else? Porsche. Porsche. And now imagine something happens to you. But you can't drive that car. And you are alone. And you have the best, the most sophisticated car. And you're looking at it. And you need to go somewhere. What do you do? You have your mind. But you can't drive the car. You are stuck. In a similar way, the body you're carrying right now, the body you are right now, is that car. And that car has a lot of things. The wheels are your legs. The engine is everything, all of our organs. <coughs> the wheel, all of that is within ourselves. But with the car, we can go and buy a new one. Unfortunately, with our body, we cannot do that. But the question I have for you guys, who's the driver? Who is the driver of your own car? What is that? I am. What is that I? So take a moment and think about that. 
Who is the driver of your car? It's not your mind. For sure, your emotions do not drive your car and do not drive your body. And most of you in here, since you are here, I believe you all want to know who the driver is. Raise your hands. All of you? Right. It is your spirit. You can try as much as you want to make any logical sense of your life. Any logical sense. You can try as much as you want to bring those emotions intact. But until you guys learn to bring that stillness within ourselves and stop intruding into other people's lives and stop talking about other people but we embody ourselves, we envelop ourselves into who we are. Until we start to master the wheel that brings us into the path where we need to go, that wheel is your emotional guiding system that is there to direct you every time you are out of your own alignment. As you master that emotional guiding system, you start to navigate through the journey that your spirit knows. You start to create the most beautiful thing you will ever give to yourself the gift of inner peace. With inner peace, your entire body can raise the vibration <coughs> and can start healing itself. But how do we reach this inner peace in such a fast-paced world? When, the moment we wake up, we have demands. Our jobs, our children, our lives, the tube, we go out, we go into this world full of noise. Noise designed by purpose to distract you, to be able to listen to your own voice, to your own heartbeat. If I were to do one-to-one -one with you guys, I'll prove to you one thing, that how none of you in here can listen accurately your heartbeat. And your heartbeat is the biggest organ within yourself that pumps thousands of liters of blood every single day. Yet, we cannot listen. If we cannot listen within, we cannot hear anybody outside. We cannot hear the voice of our spirit. And we cannot, for sure, get in touch with that knowing that potentially some people momentarily have in their hearts. I have been very blessed to be able to work and create the opportunity to work with some of the top coaches and spiritual healers on our planet. To learn and to understand <coughs> the makeup of our body of our mind, of our hearts, of our emotions, and the integration of that. And when we bring all of those into sync, it is where you can access anything <coughs> that you want to bring about into your life. And you then can sing very beautifully, as Kate and Sam shared earlier on, 
similar message. We can be in the flow with every person who's around us without using judgments, thoughts and beliefs that separates us from other people. 99% of your makeup is the same. Yet what I found going and working with thousands of people, including some of the top in their field and entrepreneurs, their focus is in the 1%. And that 1% has such a big distraction that cannot allow us to be in that inner peace. So how did I get to that amazing peace that I feel within myself on every single day and being able to be even endorsed by one of the best teachers in the world? It was a huge hurdle to overcome. I will share just a moment of that. I arrived in UK at the age of 19, just before my 20th birthday. How many of you have heard of the war in former Yugoslavia? Okay. So I was in the war from the age of 18, civil war. Like every kid, being happy at school, one morning you have the army grabbing you, robbing you of your own freedom. I think Sam mentioned tell you know, about freedom. When you are robbed at the age of 18 of everything you know, suddenly you have no home, no parents, nobody, you have a gun. And you are forced to go into a civil war that you despise. Your entire body does not like to fight. When we fight, it's when we resist. You are forced to fight the very same people that you grew up with. You are forced to fight your own sisters and brothers. And you are brainwashed. I spent 18 months not knowing what I'm going to have another breath. And I use that breath now to create that inner peace. So 18 months, you can only imagine for a second. Many, many of you may have seen movies or may have seen documentaries or stuff like that about what war is. And we have currently a lot of war around the planet. That war is it's in each one of us. I could stand in here and speak to you guys for years. But I ended up in the streets of London, homeless, emotionally destroyed, with no finances, no money, no family, no friend, and no roof over my head. Anybody's been like that on the streets in here? One. Okay. So next time you walk around on the streets, take a moment and see who's homeless. This could be the next president. Six months I spent homeless, watching people passing by. I was dealing with the emotions, what's going to happen with my family and everything that was happening in former Yugoslavia. But that six months I cried more than the river Thames. I just wasn't sure which one was bigger. In that six months, I learned quite a lot. I learned how to survive with nothing and be humble and be grateful that at least I do not have shell over my head. I wasn't thinking that I don't have a home. I wasn't thinking about I need clothes and clean food or you know what everybody else had around me. I was just being grateful. <coughs> that I wasn't hearing sniperies and I wasn't seeing people dying in front of my eyes. I spent the next 10 years working average 18 hours every single day with no break to educate myself, to learn English, to create friendships, and to bring my life back to normal whilst trying with my elder sister in Switzerland 
to send some money home and see whether my parents will survive and other family members left. That left me to graduate from UCL with honors. I received few awards, but through all of that, there are many advertisements that happened and the pain that got generated. So that led me to the next 10 years to create a very successful IT career working in the corporate world and understanding the corporate world and understanding the games that are happening in the corporate world and understanding no matter where you are, we still treat one another badly. Whether you are in the war or we are in the most beautiful country that I consider England to be now and it's my home. I only understood that after having gone around the world to try to fix myself. But as we go through that journey, we start to really listen to something that we listen every single day. The alarm that wakes you up every morning. Yet many people press it on snooze. Many people live their life on snooze and they're not really awakened to who they really are. That inspired me, my entire journey, and working in the corporate world, and being made redundant, and almost facing being on the streets again. That inspired me to deliver the dream that I had <coughs> when I was very young. To be a captain of a spaceship, to be an engineer, to be a heart doctor, and to be a scientist. Later on, little I knew that I achieved my childhood dream. You may ask right now, how? Captain, what does a captain of a spaceship do? Who is a Star Trek person in here? <laughs> Few people, Star Treks. What does the captain say when he says, Captain Picard, what does he say? Um. Two, boldly. To go, to go where no man has gone before. Where no man has gone before. Thank you. So what I help people today with my integrated coaching practice and the unique methodology, which is based on that acronym ALARM, which all of us have in ourselves, is to really expand their consciousness to boldly go where they've never dreamed they can go. To raise their vibration so they can leave their body and start learning about their own spirit. I started doing out-of-body experiences when I was in hospital. So I healed myself with a lot of very, very difficult illnesses. So I achieved that dream to help people to really go beyond the, any dream they can really have. You may ask how, how I became heart doctor. I spent 25 years with healers. And healing was from a very young age, and some of you who have read my book or will not read my book. There's a journey in there where I talk when I was in hospital for two years, breathless, where the entire medical world gave up on me. But my mother didn't, my parents didn't, and they took me to spiritual healers. Six months down the line, spending time with those healers, not dressed in a suit, not dressed with beautiful clothes, but living in huts in the mountains, I became extremely curious at the age of eight and nine. How on earth <coughs> this person who's never been to school, never been to university, never been taught about anything, can do something within my body and I feel good about it. So I became very curious about energy work. That followed me through, even through the war, even through when I came to England. And I start continuously developing myself, understanding the eastern part of all these people who do meditation, all the spiritual teachers that do some amazing work, but nobody knows them. They very humbly work in their own practices, in their own places, somewhere in India, anywhere around the world. There's no fame in there. It's pure love, pure connectedness. So I took the healing world, combined it with a, all the knowledge and all the experiences and all the life adversities that I had to go through, brought it together, merged it with all my scientific knowledge, and I created the unique method which I talk about in my book, the TJ's evolutionary method. And that method is designed for anybody who wants to go 
deep within themselves and wide in themselves. So to deepen their consciousness and widen who they are. So they can truly connect and hear the voice which is yours to bring about your true authentic self <coughs> and to allow yourselves to be who you already know you are. Just to uncover those parts within yourselves that are currently in the shade of your own light. As you connect to that light, you will connect to every person on this planet and beyond. It is through that connection that we can all make a difference. That journey led me to currently finishing my second book, which will be published by Hay House, to simply talk about the next part, which is about the loneliness that we've created in today's world. And my message to you guys, the final message to you, when you acknowledge who you truly are, when you accept the love that each one of you, you are, you will honor your own spirits who is here with you in your body, loving you, guiding you, trusting you, and wanting you to pick up that call that is your call for love. Thank you.